My name is Jason Tate. I'm the instructor for Section F, who you're about to see. I just want to thank you guys again for being here. We will get right to you. Enjoy. You know, actually, this works out better for me. You know the slimmies of the summer come to class wearing next to nothing, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> hey, why should I be mad? At least he said goodbye this time. I just wish I hadn't wasted my money buying this stupid present. Nah, you ain't gotta do nothing, Uncle Phil. Ain't like I'm still five years old, you know? Ain't like I'm gonna be sitting up every night asking my mom, when's daddy coming home, you know? Who needs him? Hey, he wasn't there to teach me how to shoot my first basket, but I learned, didn't I? And I got pretty damn good at it too, didn't I, Uncle Phil? Yeah. Got through my first date without him. I learned how to drive, I learned how to shave, I learned how to fight without him. I had 14 great birthdays and he never even sent me a damn card. The hell with him? I didn't need them then, and I don't need them now. No, you know what, Uncle Phil? I'm going to get through college without him. I'm going to get a great job without him. I'm going to marry me a beautiful honey, and I'm going to have me a whole bunch of kids. And I sure as hell don't need him for that, because there's a damn thing he can teach me about how to love my kids. How come he don't want me no more, man? Rehabilitate it. Well, let me see. You know, I don't have any idea what that means. I know what you think it means. To me, it's just a made up word. A, a politician's word. So young fellas like yourself can wear a suit and tie and have a job. What do you really want to know? Am I sorry for what I did? It's not a day goes by that I don't feel regret. Not because I'm in here. Because you think I should. I look back on the way I was then. A young, stupid kid that committed that terrible crime. I want to talk to him. I want to try to talk some sense to him. Tell him the way things are. But I can't. That kid's long gone, and this man's all that's left. I've got to live with that. Rehabilitate it? That's a bullshit word. So go on and stamp your form and stop wasting my time because to tell you the truth, I don't give a shit. Jesus Christ, can you stay put for one second? Clean your house once in a while? Not act like leaving a woman and her child is a casual fucking thing. 
you have no idea, do you? You have no idea how much time I've spent waiting for you. How much shit I put up with because you never taught me how to do anything else. You disappearing for months on end and you never answering my phone calls even when things between mom and me were so bad. Why weren't you there? Why didn't you stick up for me? Why can't you do one single thing you say you're gonna do? And you act like you want me to come see you here, but you don't know how to have me here. You don't know how to deal with it. You can't even have a conversation with me. You shouldn't have to rely on me. I'm the child. I'm the child. Are we pissing our pants yet? Boy, do I have a feeling we are getting close. Yeah, someone is about to have pee pee pants real soon. <laughs> All right, which one of you pricks is the leader? You? Hi, you're Rick, right? I'm Negan. And I do not appreciate you killing my men. Also, when I sent my people to kill your people for killing my people, you killed more of my people. Not cool. Not cool! You have no idea how not cool that is. But you are going to find out shortly. Yes, you are. You see, Rick? Whatever you do, no matter what, you don't mess with the New World Order. New World Order is this. And it is really very simple. So even if you're stupid, which you very may well be, you'll be able to understand. Are you ready? Here it is. Pay attention. Give me your stuff, or I will kill you. I've proved my point. I've demonstrated there's no difference between me and everyone else. All it takes is one bad day. One bad day to drive the sanest man alive to lunacy. That's how far the world is from where I am. Just one bad day. You had a bad day once. Am I right? I know I am. I can tell. You had a bad day and everything changed. Why else would you dress up as a flying rat? You had a bad day and it drove you as crazy as everyone else. Only you won't admit it. You have to keep pretending that life makes some kind of sense. That there's some point to all of this struggling. God, you make me want to puke. I mean, what is it with you? What made you what you are? Girlfriend killed by the mob, maybe? Brother carved up by some mugger or something like that? I bet. Something like that. Something like that happened to me, you know? I'm not exactly sure what it was. Sometimes I remember it one way, sometimes another. If I'm going to have a past, I prefer it to be multiple choice. <laughs> What are you doing down here? You can't remember. Maybe it's about Danny. I think you have some very definite ideas of what should be done with Danny. You think maybe 
he should be taken to a doctor. You think his health might be at stake. You are concerned about him. Are you concerned about me? Have you ever thought about my responsibilities? Have you ever had a single moment's thought about my responsibilities? Have you ever thought for a single solitary moment about my responsibilities to my employers? Has it ever occurred to you that I have agreed to look after the Overlook Hotel until May the 1st? Do you care at all that the owners of this place have put their complete trust in me and I have signed the letter of agreement, a contract in which I have accepted that responsibility? Do you even know what a moral or ethical principle is? Have you thought of what will happen to my future if I failed to live up to my expectations? You've had your whole fucking life to think things over. What good is a few minutes going to do you right now? Wendy, Wendy, I'm not going to hurt you. Wendy, light of my life, I said I'm not going to hurt you. I'm just going to bash your brains in. I'm going to bash him right the fuck in! You died on a Saturday morning. And I had you placed here, under our tree. And I had that house of your father's bulldozed to the ground. <sighs> Little Forrest, he's, he's doing just fine. About to start school soon again. I make his breakfast, lunch, and dinner every day, and I make sure he combs his hair and brushes his teeth every day. <laughs> I'm teaching him how to play ping pong. He's really good. We fish a lot, and every night we read a book. He's so smart, Jenny. You'd be so proud of him. I am. He uh, wrote you a letter. He says he can't read it. I'm not supposed to, so I'll just leave it here for you. Jenny, I, I don't know if Mama was right or if it's Lieutenant Dan. I don't know if we each have a destiny or if we're all just floating around like accidental, like on a breeze. I miss you, Jenny. And if there's anything you need, I won't be far. Do you know, do you know how long it takes me to plan these heists? Days, weeks. Do you know how much time, how much fucking effort goes into making sure I can minimize casualties, minimize property damage, maximize profit, plan a safe escape route, make sure everyone gets a fair cut so, so there's any backstabbing, the organization, the fucking hours upon hours of strategizing every possible scenario, and then, and then twip, 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 joke, 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 it's over, it's over, and I'm in prison. Do you know what happens in prison? Real prison, Felicia? You get beaten in prison. You get stabbed in prison. You get raped in prison. <laughs> and every second of it, all you can hear are his fucking jokes in your head. And how does he do it? How does he beat me? Is he smarter than me? No. No, he's not fucking smarter or, or more clever. He, he didn't plan or put forth any real effort. He's just stronger and faster, and, and he knows it, and that's why he does it. He's, he's a fucking bully. 
That's all he is. He's another fucking bully. Like, like my father, like the kingpin. Another asshole with low self-esteem and an attitude problem. If you think he does this shit for anybody but himself, you're wrong, and come on. Do you honestly believe with all the superheroes in New York, we couldn't live without Spider-Man? Wrong! Wrong. Wrong. You know, when you are drowning, you don't actually inhale until right before you black out. It's called voluntary apnea. It's like, no matter how much you're freaking out, the instinct to not let anyone in is so strong. And so, right before you open your mouth, it feels like your head's exploding. When you finally do let it in, that's when it stops hurting. It's not scary anymore. It's, it's actually kind of peaceful. And no, I don't feel sorry for him. Just because a bunch of dumbasses dragged him to a pool when he couldn't swim, doesn't give him a right to go off killing them one by one. Oh, by the way, my dad told me they found pictures of Alice on her Matt's computer. And not just of her, though. He photoshopped himself into those photos of them holding hands and kissing like he built this whole fake relationship. So, yeah, maybe drowning when he was nine years old was what set him off the rails, but the dude, he was definitely riding a crazy train. near me. Don't anyone come near me. I don't need any words from you. I'm not threatening anyone. I don't even know what I'm doing here. You all say that you don't remember Vince. Okay, fine. Maybe you don't. Maybe it's Vince that's crazy. Maybe he made this whole family thing up. I don't even care anymore. I was just coming along for the ride. I thought it would be a nice gesture. Besides, I was curious. He made you all sound so familiar to me. Every one of you. For every name, I had an image. Every time he'd tell me a name, I'd see the person. In fact, you were all so clear in my mind that I actually believed it was you. I actually believed that when I walked through that door, that the people who lived here would be the same people from my imagination. Real people. People with faces. But I don't recognize any of you. Not one. Not even the slightest resemblance. Actually, you know what? Can I say something about the cat? Yeah, uh, this is... And Rhoda, no disrespect here, but, um, this is total shit. Go for it, and you can do it. These are lies. We're liars. Think about it. Why do people buy these cards? It's not because they want to say how they feel. People buy these cards because they can't say how they feel or they're afraid to. We provide the service that lets them off the hook. And you know what? I say to hell with it. I say, let's level with America. At least let them speak with themselves. I mean, look at this. What's it say? 
congratulations on the new baby. How about congratulations on your new baby? Guess that's it for hanging out. Nice knowing you, buddy. Wait, what's this? Oh, fancy. Look at this one with all the hearts. Let's open it up. Happy Valentine's Day, sweetheart. I love you. That's nice. This is exactly what I'm talking about. What does it even mean, love? Do you know? Do you? Anybody? If someone gave me this card, Mr. Vance, I would eat it. It's the cards and the movies and the pop songs. They're to blame for all the lies and the heartache. We are responsible. I am responsible. I think we do a bad thing here. I mean, people should be able to say how they feel, how they really feel, not some words some stranger puts in their mouth. 